Good morning. We are in the office. This is my girlfriend's office and I also have to store my electric bike in here, which is pretty giant. Recently she had to bring her bike in here, which is not electric, but still a bike and it doesn't fold up. The apartment wouldn't let her leave her bike locked up under the stairs, even though they don't have any bike parking or anything. So unfortunately we had to bring her bike upstairs. So that makes two bikes in here now. I can't really move the shelves behind me. They're just giant and we don't have anywhere to put them. I do have this shelf over here that is holding all of my house plants and that's it. That is like the whole purpose of the shelf. So I think I can move this out and move the house plants out. It'll give it a little bit more room for the bikes. I even think that these bookshelves could be like scooched over a little bit. That is the first task for today is moving the plants and the shelf. Shouldn't be too bad. Right here is another Hoya Blue. I moved the Croniana over here yesterday on this shelf. Don't know if this will be a permanent spot for it or not, but I just noticed that this is halfway open. Oh, and it smells amazing, of course. The other one over here that bloomed last time is growing more buds. Wow. Oh just smells amazing. It is seriously like fresh floral jasmine and like so sweet, like drenched in sugar syrup. That's what it smells like. Mm, love, forever will love that smell. And then there's this. This is a Peperomia Marcello or something. I don't know, I'll put it up on the screen. I think this is my longest plant now, yes, for sure. It's hitting the ground. It has some beautiful, healthy foliage that's popping up like right here. It's like a red brown stem and beautiful green leaves, but then it also has some yellowing on maybe the really older ones. It also has this, I don't know what this is, a bloom or a seed thing, but it's blooming possibly, which is cool. I love it. This thing grew so, so fast. It's alive, which is really great. It just needs to be in a better place, I think, and it will thrive. That's, that's what I want for it. Thinking I might have to chop this. It is probably three inches from touching the floor and knowing Sal, it's probably best to shorten it a bit. Definitely think I should give this a chop today and propagate it. Well, I moved some things and then I moved some more things, but then I just ended up moving them back to the original place. All in all, I did a lot of shuffling back and forth. Her bike is behind me, printer's over there where it originally was. I tried to move it over there, but it didn't work. I did move that little shelf over on the other side. I think that did save some room. That's the electric bike. <laughs> It's supposed to be in the 70s tomorrow and Friday, and I can't even go out and ride it because I can't get it down the stairs by myself. So that's what's going on in here. I'm just gonna call this done. I just got done dusting all of my houseplants, which is a lot, but it is so important to dust the leaves because if there's a layer of dust on the leaves. They can't use light as efficiently as they could if there was no dust, which then makes them grow slower, which I don't want. So I try to go through like twice a year and just wipe down the leaves and make sure everything's looking good. It also helps a little bit with pest control. So highly recommend clean your plants. It is time to thin these seedlings already. I think it's been two and a half weeks. I'm not really sure, but it is definitely time. I have a bowl for the edible ones and I have a bowl for the non-edible ones. <laughs> edible ones would definitely be kale right here. These are just kale sprouts, delicious. The non-edible ones would be the tomatoes. I'm not gonna eat a tomato sprout. I don't know how that would taste and I don't really wanna find out. So I'm just gonna look through and try to find the, the strongest looking ones. This one has a true leaf and another one coming up. That, that looks promising. I'm going to leave two kale right here. I think maybe I'll thin them next week and just see which one looks better. These are San Marzano tomatoes. 
lots and lots of them. I think I'm gonna do the same with the tomatoes. Just leave two, watch them snip the one that doesn't look very good. This is the dazzling blue right here and one right here. They're so stunning already. I'm obsessed. These are more of my warm weather veggies. I unfortunately knocked over a yellow squash right here. I don't know, I broke the stem. It's still alive though, and it's been like a day. It's kind of still anchored in there. I don't know if that's a root, so I kind of buried the stem and I hope maybe it'll just be okay. This is also a yellow squash over here and it has three. So I'm just gonna cut these two in front. Those go in the non-edible bowl. I think this is a zucchini. I should probably mark this, but this was an extra one. I think I'm gonna cut the cucumbers and just have one. These are eggplants right here. There are a lot of them. I'm just gonna thin these a little bit and just get rid of the ones that I know for sure. I don't want in there. There we go, there's two each. And then this is a mini pepper over here. These are all herbs and feverfew, which is a flower. They have all popped up. We have echinacea, stevia, parsley right over here, feverfew, lemon balm, which looks beautiful, catnip back here, and more echinacea, the catnip. Has a beautiful leaf right here. If you rub it ever so gently, it smells like catnip, which smells like marijuana, which is interesting. I know I'm gonna have to thin something here, but I don't really know yet. So I think I might just leave these as it is. This is the other tray of mostly flowers and herbs. These are eggplants over here. Bergamot is coming in over here, like a decent amount, more parsley. All the violas have popped up, which is really exciting. Very, very small amount in here. And then we have one echinacea that's trying its hardest right there. These are eggplants and there's a couple that are growing on the side. These are collard greens, more kale and a bean right there. This is dinosaur kale, another dazzling blue. Only one popped up and there's another one actually coming up here. I'm going to snip that. And a collard, we only had one of this collard also trying its best. Fun of collards here. It's so interesting how a bunch popped up here, but we only had one over here. I'm not sure, maybe because they might be older seeds. This bean, this is the only purple bean that popped up. I am scared though that this thing is gonna get giant and I'm gonna not know where to put it. It's already pretty tall. These are more tomatoes. This is the heirloom tomatoes. It actually, I might think I might just snip this one. Definitely snip some over here. These are, what are these? Gardener's Delight. This is a spoon tomato. I only got one spoon tomato. This is the other spoon tomato. I'm just gonna snip this one. And then these are peppers. It looks like there's about two in each. And if there's three, I'm gonna snip them. And this is a zucchini. Ooh, it's already growing its second leaf right there. And there's another one popping up in the middle. That's a little scary. These are purple beans. They never popped up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trash them. That works too. This is technically our first harvest. <laughs> but I'm not gonna be tracking this in my harvest log. I'm just gonna eat them on top of whatever I'm eating later. Hmm, so good. And it's time I need to propagate this peperomia. It is touching the floor all the way down here. It's about three inches, not even two inches off the floor. And you know, I have a dog that gets into everything. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to snip this a little bit. It grows so very fast. I really recommend this as a plant if you love trailing, hanging plants and you like fast growing plants, I think this one would satisfy your needs for sure. Absolutely. That's how long it is right there. I'm gonna cut it, I think, to like here. Okay, that looks much better, I think.
guys, look, the poppy bloomed again and it's yellow. <laughs> I was definitely not expecting that. I looked outside the patio and saw this yellow flower and was like, what? I didn't know it had different colors. Time is doing well. I've been taking it in and out just because I know it's not hardened off, but I think it's doing okay. Strawberry is getting a new leaf. These two are dead, I think. Well, this one's like partly dead. This one is for sure dead. And I've been trying to keep these seeds moist and dark. Hopefully they'll pop up one day. exciting package that just came in. It is from my mother. Let's get you closer. Oh, I'm so excited. Look at this. This is a soil blocking device. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. I didn't realize it would be such a solid thing. Rotate it firmly. Okay. I believe I need to add these little nipple looking doodads. You press the product firmly against the wet soil. And then when this has a bunch of soil in it. Oh, okay. There we go. This one is a little bent looking. Not sure why, but that's okay. I think I can bend it back. I think actually it was caught on one of these little metal things right there and uh, it bent it. <laughs> Probably a me thing, whoops. Stick it into the soil, pop it back out, and then you go whoop, and then it pops out little soil squares and you can put a seed in it. So these things go in here, all right, and then when you get your soil, it'll make like an automatic hole in each soil block, perfect for your seeds. There are different sizes. There's like a little flat one, long one, short one, and the square one, because they make little mini versions of this. And apparently if you use this square in your bigger block of soil, you can take the mini blocks of soil that you made with the mini version of this and just put it into that little square that this thing would make. It's like the perfect size. I don't really think a mini one would be beneficial to me. I feel like just one of these is totally fine. Also just a lot more work having to transplant like little squares into here. It's like, why not just plant them in this thing in the first place? Thank you, mom. I'm so excited. I have been putting off starting my seeds just so I can use this thing. Yeah. chair set up. I had to go to Home Depot twice because I'm missing parts. I don't know where they went. They just got lost in the last two moves that I did. I did DIY it a little bit and it's working just fine, I think. Uh, a little wonky up here. I need to fix that, but that's for a different day. I think it fits so perfectly in this corner. I'm totally obsessed. <laughs> Can't wait until the greenhouse can be taken down and not be such an eyesore in the living room. But for now, I think it looks good. There's enough space everywhere and it doesn't look too cramped, or at least to me. I think I'm happy with how this space turned out for sure. <laughs> Much better than having my office here, I think. Welcome to my kitchen. It is a complete mess. It is a mess for a reason. We are gonna be making bulk cookie dough so we can freeze some of it, so we can always have a constant supply of cookies. <laughs> Also, my girlfriend comes back today after being out of town for a whole week. I think I'm gonna be making like a trail mix type cookie. It's gonna have peanuts, sunflower seeds, walnuts, raisins, chocolate chips. It's gonna be so good. And then also I am gonna be making these little apple raisin bars. I don't really know, but I'll figure that out whenever I get to it. We are also going to be starting seeds. That's what this whole mess is over here. So by the end of the day, this whole island should be cleared off. So I'm using soft white wheat, but then I'm also gonna be using barley because I have barley and I wanna use it up. So I'm gonna be using 100 grams, which is kind of almost half. And I guess we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully good. I've never, never done this before. I am using Minimalist Baker's book. 
It is actually the one bowl jumbo chocolate chip cookie recipe, but I'm adding in all my goodies to make them a trail mix cookie. I am using white sugar and then coconut sugar. I think the recipe calls for white sugar and brown sugar, but I'm using coconut sugar because we have it. This is egg replacer. That is literally what it's called. This is all of the dries. I whisked them all together. I'm gonna start mixing in the, the goodies. I'm gonna do a quarter of a cup chocolate chips, a quarter of a cup raisins, a quarter of a cup peanuts, mm, like an eighth of a cup sunflower seeds or sunflower kernels, and a half cup of walnuts. Sometimes it's just way easier to use your hands. I'm definitely more of a hands-on person. So I am gonna be baking some today. I'm gonna fill this tray up and then I'm going to refrigerate it. And then the next batch, I'm going to portion out and throw in the freezer. These are the cookies that I am going to freeze and then seal, maybe vacuum seal and pop into the freezer. This is the second batch. It's definitely like more cookie dough like to me. This one looks drier for sure. I think I messed up with the egg replacer. I think I needed to add just a little bit more water to it. So I'm gonna pop these in the freezer and a few hours I'll come back and throw them in a bag. These look so good. I'm definitely gonna try one now. I put them in there for 15 minutes. Oh yeah. Oh. That's so perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. They're still so good, even if they are just a tad bit dry, but like they're not bad. If you have a little bit of oat milk on the side, they're perfect. I was gonna make those apple raisin cookie bar things, but I ran out of butter. And although I could use oil, I have avocado oil and that's pretty expensive to be dumping into cookies. So apple raisin cookie bar things coming soon. It's really windy. I don't know if you can hear me. I look like a disaster. But I'm walking home. Why am I walking home? Because my car is at urgent care. Why is my car at urgent care? Because I was peeing blood and my abdomen on the right side was hurting so bad. Profusely sweating. Could barely talk. Pale. They even said I was jaundice. I was at home and honestly I thought I had just started my period. Didn't really think much of it. Had this cramping. A little bit of pain and cramping. Thought it was abnormal for my period because that doesn't really happen much. And then it kept getting worse and worse, but like over time, slowly over like two, two and a half hours, this pain started getting horrible. Like when I was making cookies, like I was in pain and I was just trying to get through making the damn cookies. <laughs> I was stupid. After I was done with that, like I even remember, no, I don't, I don't even think I cleaned up my dishes. I was trying to clean the dishes and oh, I was in so much pain. I had to go lay down. I peed again, more blood, I was in so much pain. So I went to the urgent care. When I got there, the pain had tripled. Like I think it was like a 10 out of 10. I was hunched over, couldn't talk, it was horrible. And they said, um, we can't really do anything for you unless it's in UTI. And I was like, I don't, it's not a UTI. I know it's not. <laughs> never had one but that's not a UTI. She's like okay well we can't help you and I was like okay I can't drive so you're gonna have to call an ambulance because like I literally cannot I can't drive like I'm in so much pain. While I was driving to urgent care I almost puked. That's how much like I was so uncomfortable so much pain almost fainted. They get me an ambulance and it arrives like so fast which was nice and that's my first time I've ever been in an ambulance <laughs> and then they they drive me somewhere. My blood pressure was very low and I needed fluids like desperately so they fixed that all up and then I got a room at the hospital which I had no idea where I was it was interesting because I hopped out of this ambulance well I was on a bed <laughs> hopped out of it though and I looked around and I was like this looks familiar like I recognize the terrain and I was like where are we because like I still don't really know the area very well and so they kind of told me like where we were and I was like oh okay and then when I finally was leaving the hospital I looked it up on the map and I was like oh my god I'm like we're right down the road from home really strange anyway I guess let me tell you what's going on because uh, okay so I get to the hospital I'm having such a great time really really fun <sighs> They take my blood, I did a CT scan, they tested my urine, and a few things on my blood work was like 
low and high and it just kind of indicated kidney issues. The doctor said all of my symptoms are consistent with a kidney stone, which a year ago I got a CT scan and it said I had a two millimeter kidney stone. The doctor was like, eh, it might pass, it might not. You would probably not even know like what's going on. So I really wasn't worried about it. <laughs> At first I was like, mm, I need to make sure I'm hydrated forever so I don't ever have to deal with kidney stones. But then of course that wears away after time. And honestly, this week I was so bad at hydrating. Like today I have like no water, nothing. Whatever fluids I have in me are from what they gave me at the hospital. My hair is just flying all over the place. But yes, my results said, CT scan said, yes, you have a three millimeter kidney stone and it's in the top of your ureter. On screen, I will draw a picture of a kidney, a ureter, and a bladder, and I will put where my kidney stone is currently. Then, my blood, or my urine, obviously, has blood in it, but that was about it, which was good. It's a good thing. Yeah, she gave me pain meds, prescriptions, you know, stuff like that, anti-nausea stuff, and said, yeah, you have kidney stone, stay hydrated, and it'll pass someday, maybe. <sighs> Uh, so, as I was leaving, I'm trying to get an Uber, a Lyft, or something because I don't have my car. And the apps are not downloaded. Well, they're like downloaded, but they're not fully downloaded, you know? And I don't have service. And I'm looking at the map and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna walk home. 71 degrees. I feel fine. Like, I'm pain free now. So I'm just gonna walk home. So that's what I'm doing. It's really good. Oh, I'm home. What a wild day. I still have all these dishes, which I think I'm gonna do now. And a, a part of me wants to like start my seeds and do everything that I wanted to do. But another part of me is like, you literally just went through a traumatic kidney experience. Like, can you rest for a second? I always wanna be doing everything. So I don't know, I think I'm gonna do the dishes and then I guess I'll just sit down and edit forever until my girlfriend gets home. I guess we'll seed start tomorrow. Also the garden opens tomorrow. Like we can go there tomorrow. My goal was to plant potatoes, but I haven't cut them yet. So I guess I'll plant them next weekend. I got an email and it said to tell up your spot to disrupt the caterpillar eggs. I don't really know. I guess they have a really bad, uh, not caterpillar, what am I saying? Grasshopper. Apparently they have a really bad grasshopper problem there. And so they said to till the soil a little bit to get rid of the grasshopper eggs that were overwintering there. I don't know. I'm just gonna do these and I'm gonna drink some water, okay? I totally forgot that we have cookies in the freezer that I need to put into a bag. I'm sealing these bags right here. These are not like vacuum seal bags. They say that on the package, but they're not like the correct kind. They're like really flimsy, like a Ziploc bag. I have no idea, but this is what I have right now. I'm out of my other ones and I'm going to use this. Unfortunately, you have to seal three sides on it, which is really annoying. Okay, that's an open side, that's an open side. And here are the cookies. They look good. So I think I wanna put some in the smaller bag here. But now they're definitely individually frozen. <laughs> Hopefully they won't stick to each other when you're going in there and grabbing one or two. Bag of cookies. I'm going to seal this, not with a vacuum, but just like normal sealing. And then I'm gonna put it into this bag and I hope this will help with like freezer burn. There we go. Trail mix cookies. <laughs> go pop these into the freezer. Now I'm gonna make a lemonade because my mom told me to drink a lemonade and I think that it might help with my kidney stone. <laughs> I haven't looked that up or anything, so not, I'm not entirely positive, but honestly, anything that will help, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm down to try. My girlfriend is on a plane currently on her way home, which is nice. It was actually kind of scary not having anybody here and me going through like a medical emergency. I was terrified. It was not a good time, not good at all. I don't have family in the state, so I was literally completely alone and I had to drive myself. I had a bag on my lap because I was so nauseous. Ooh, it was just not good. Not a good time. The rest of the night, I'm just gonna relax. I'm forcing myself to relax. I was gonna make dinner, but I just, there's no way that I can make dinner now. I'm just gonna have leftovers and drink my lemonade and I'm gonna add honey instead of white sugar. Ooh, we are under like a wind advisory tomorrow. It's super windy. Actually, it's, I need to fix my little shade cloth out on my patio because it's coming off its hooks which is concerning. That should be good. I'm just gonna grab some hot water from my dispenser over here. Just enough to dissolve the honey. Then I'm gonna fill the rest up with some cold water. Are you ready for this taste test? Oh yeah. Mm. Lemonade is so good. It is a little warm. So I might pop it into the fridge or freezer or something, but wow. Mm. Whoa, lemonade's blowing my mind over here.